children scream. They can't hear us just yet. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is what they're going to see in a moment. All right. Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever Ice Coach Online live stream. The first little hiccup there was I didn't turn the mic on, but we're Stefano. Hey. <laughs> Stefano is a German national coach, um, choreographer. He is he has lots of couples he takes to worlds and European championships. He is an ISU technical specialist. But I know Stefano Caruso from the Olympic Games actually because we competed against each other and I know him in a different way. What a wonderful Here he is, he is <laughs> a celebration after the Olympics. Nice. The first thing we did was open that and then we went to celebrate with the Jamaican bobsleigh team of all people. So that is how that was I know awesome. Stefano. Um, yeah, good to have you here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward for this nice hour of chatting about figure skating. Yeah, and I can see everyone starting to post some comments up, so that's pretty cool. Um, all right, we're going. So what we're going to do is we're going to share a few funny stories to start us off, and then um, we're going to go into answering some of your questions. So get typing, everyone, with uh, whatever you want us to cover. Um, so I'm going to start with my funny story, okay, just to kick things off. Uh, Stasia's okay. going to think of one. And, Stefano's going to think of one. So, sometimes things don't exactly go right when you are doing a show or competition. Mishaps happen. The audience doesn't always see them, but they definitely saw my one. So, what was happening, it was, uh, it was the finale. We'd done a great show, fantastic. And I'm locking my hands around my partner's ankle like so. And I'm going into something called the headbanger or bounce spin that you can sometimes call it. And as I leant forwards to scoop her up off the ice, the second she left the ice, I felt the back of my pants or trousers just go boom and explode. Now, you might not think that's too bad, <laughs> but the company I was working for, they make you wear something called a dance belt underneath <laughs> your costume. So it's just trousers. Oh my dance god, belt, Lloyd. Naked Lloyd. So, um, basically, a dance belt is like a thong. Yeah, a dance belt is basically a thong. So as I whipped up into that lift um there it was i was had my thong and my my butt exposed to the world but i'm holding my ankle my partner's ankle like this and it's kind of like the olympic hammer throw but you don't throw you just hold on i'm i'm pretty sure you were like uh, handling uh, with a lot of confidence well, I, I, overall I right when I was stood up. because overall we are eye dancer well, of course I had... we are eye dancer we have to smile and like behave like nothing uh, happened the hair and, uh, it wasn't that bad until I went to land though, because the, the way you land it is you lift the girl up this way and then you, you kind of lean forward to stick your butt out so you can pull the girl up right again. And the moment I did that, the pants oh, widened and uh, yeah, I mean there was only about 5,000 By the way, is there a video of that unfortunate uh, event, Lloyd? Because I'm also... I could maybe yeah. message the PD from the show and ask her if they, if they had one, you know. Yeah, so that's my embarrassing story. Stasia, you want to go next with yours? Okay. Um, in the show world, I've had a lot of embarrassing things happen. That's the beauty of live entertainment, right? Just like Lloyd's story. But mine is, I think, my most embarrassing story. And this just happened last year, like in the fall. And um, Lloyd's parents actually came to watch our show. And it was the first time they've seen us do our number live. And um, I was playing Belle, that show from Beauty and the Beast. And I start up on like a pod, which is like just a elevated type of, you know, platform. And there's three steps to go down. So it's dark, lights go on, 
and I'm on the pod, all is well, and about two seconds later, you have to go down the steps. I fall right on my butt on the second step, and there's no one else on the ice, nothing else going on. Like, it's it's dark and the spotlight is on me, and here's Belle running down the stairs and on her butt. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I've never done that before, ever in my life. Your parents had come to watch. Yeah. I was mortified. Fortunately, it was a full audience in Sheffield, so about six to 8,000 people watching. And they did that thing, you know, when you're on the ice competing or doing a show, when you do a fall or something like this, the audience goes like, ooh, and they all make this noise at exactly the same time. And you think, oh, Yes, I know, I've made a plonky of myself, oh my thank you very much, but yeah. you know, you kind of, they just remind you of that. Oh my you know? god, it was really <laughs> dramatic, and I had to get up and get some speed to go into a spiral after that, and oh, I was mortified, but funny enough, it was like a good number after that, so hopefully... Cheers to that. Hopefully Cheers, they yeah. forgot about it. Oh my gosh. So, that's my embarrassing story. Not as funny as Lloyd's, but well, it's something. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good yeah. myself. I was on the backstage and uh, I just heard one of the guys in the crew say, Oh, no, stage is down. And I thought, oh no. Oh. And of course I heard the audience say, ooh. You know. Big gasp. <laughs> yeah. So, Stefano, come on, let's hear it. What have you got for us? Yeah, let's hear it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm sure you have something. I'm gonna go with the easy one. <laughs> <laughs> that is not so embarrassing, actually. It's like one of those moments in which athletes are... Uh, actually, could fit really good for the situation right now. Let's think about like the Olympic Games uh, being like postponed to the 2000... Like uh, 21, that's crazy. Like imagine yeah. you being an athlete at the top level and you're gonna get to compete in like three months and it's like, no! No, hey, yeah. no, yeah. gonna get the same shape in one year. So this kind of feeling I never had, thanks God. But uh, it happened one time. I remember, and you were there as well. It was a Nice international competition, yeah. and um, I think you were first or second after the rhythm dance. I mean, short dance at the time, and uh, I was place number three. And we had to compete the free dance the day after, and it was Saturday night. And you know, in France, how like the things are very chilled, uh, like in Italy, like they, they, they set up a time schedule, but uh, you never know exactly how it's gonna happen. And I remember warming up like three times because the competition should have started like at 10 p.m. Then it was postponed at 12, uh, 11 p.m. And then all of a sudden it took place at midnight. Oh so my. Yeah, I remember my I remember. coach tried to motivate me like uh, going into my free dance uh, uh, warm-up practice five minutes at midnight 30 and i was like looking at her like listen barbara i love you so much but i mean you cannot motivate me <laughs> i'm just gonna go there and whatever <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wait i uh, yeah. my coach uh, my coach there i remember had a different way of motivating me so I was stood waiting there and I was like you, I was yawning and I was like, oh, oh no, it's still another 45 <laughs> minutes to stay in costume, what do we do? And uh, my coach's technique at the time um, was to say, hey Lloyd, come here a minute. And I walked over and I was like, what's up? And uh, he took a, a bottle out of his pocket and poured water over his hands and then just patted me on the shoulders and then poured water over my costume. <laughs> and, I, and I was like... <laughs> I had no idea what was going on, and oh. so the whole time I was skating afterwards, I was like, what on earth has he just done to me? Like, what, what, what's that? And uh, yeah, it turned out afterwards, he was uh, pouring holy water on me. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Yes, it's a Russian thing. Yeah, well, I yes. didn't know at the time, I just thought, oh, look, oh, the costume true. looks wet, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, later I found out he was trying to he do something. He's trying to keep me away. <laughs> yeah, oh there you go, there you she go. She was blessing you. Yeah. yeah it's, I, a, it's a Russian thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, my goodness. Yeah, that's, that was, uh, I mean, it happens sometimes, these things. It was, uh, I was with you in, uh, <laughs> in, co in the cold. He was Russian, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was pretty cold in there. Although it was nice, the ice rink was absolutely freezing, and it, and it was water, and 
I don't know where he got it from. Like maybe he went to the, the church <laughs> before and <laughs> picked some up. I, I, yeah, I you don't can. I don't know. Uh, if you're if you're it's Russian just in case. <laughs> yeah. If you're Russian you're more often than not Jewish or Russian Orthodox. And so, you know, he he would have gotten it at church and like have it in a little bottle or something and brought it to the event for was, good luck. <laughs> it was a nice gesture, but it yeah. would have been nice also if he uh if he explained to me beforehand he was going to do it because I, I'm pretty sure I like missed a lift or something and messed up in that competition so uh, I was too busy worrying about my wet costume. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Alex Gunther. Hi Hello, Gunther. Gunny. I love this, so thank you. Thank you Hello. for showing your support. Thanks. Yeah, so if... Oh, so listen, Lloyd and Asia, tell me how how is your quarantine going on? Because I mean, I'm in Germany and you know, our lockdown already like decreased and we were already That's able crazy. to skate a little bit this week wow. so crazy. how you're handling your like one and a half month without ice skating what are you doing yeah well, well you can explain if you like <laughs> you no know, we're uh we're in cardiff in wales and the uk is still very much under lockdown and um i mean we've only gone to the grocery store pretty much and um Luckily, the weather's been really nice though, so we've been going outside a lot for exercise and doing some rollerblading, so... Well, you heard it. Yeah, I've <laughs> For, that. for I've once, that. it I've is not that. raining in the UK and we've been enjoying the nice weather. How yeah. about that? It's been great. That's awesome. I mean, I mean... Normally in the UK, you know like uh, what I think about it. I was there and one week to visit you. <laughs> And four days out of seven, it was raining. Yeah, so normally that that's you have a time right now. Normally that's what yeah. it's like. I'm shocked, and like Lloyd's parents have the most beautiful garden, so I'm just in that garden every day doing stretching, some exercises, or we'll go for a little skate. But that's the closest we can get to the ice right now, and. We don't really know when they'll open the ice rinks back up. No, we have no idea, like but we're stuff. posting lots of content, uh, Ice Coach Online, helping people out, uh, doing uh, online classes on Zoom and things like this. I see a nice supported, uh, supportive post from Abby. OMG, you guys are awesome. I missed the rink. I'm super thankful for your post. Aww. Thanks for showing your support. Thanks. It means a lot to us. That's why we do what we do. Yeah. And uh, oh yes, Alex done for pointing out Vino Yoga, which is something we'd be doing yes. with Alex actually. And Stefano, I'm sure you're yes. going to join in one of the sessions. And you a, have yes, to. Uh, I've been told about that. It's awesome. A sneak peek that some oh, will be God. opening up some classes to subscribers of Ice Coach Online. So that's something coming in the future. Yes. Um, if anybody has any questions you want to ask us, start typing away and we will start answering them. If not, we will just start. <laughs> We'll just keep chatting general skating Paddling things away. until we get some questions. Um, <laughs> Stefano, tell us about how, what you're doing to train your skaters at the moment. Well, actually, the beginning was quite tough because, uh, um, I mean, we we were told that, like, okay, from tomorrow you cannot go on the ice anymore. And so for a week, uh, I was trying to understand like dealing with the situation because i mean you've been used of your lifestyle uh, of everyday lifestyle in a way and then somebody is like interrupting that uh, and it's not only on your level but it's like all the world level yeah and so you have to deal with it. so it took like a week to try to understand how and the way uh, in which i could still run uh, my figure skating school here in berlin and to be honest with you we had to be a little bit like ice dancer, like, you know, being crazy enough uh, to uh, to adapt in a way of doing like modern dance at home in your living room uh, with your parents that maybe are like working <laughs> home office or cooking and you have to, you know, move your body like in a way that they, they I don't know, this kind of age between 14 and 20, you are kind of, you yeah. know, not that much self-confident. But I have to say, they all handle it really good uh, so far of course i know that we will have a lot of problems uh, when we will be back on the ice because those kids are young and muscle memory is something that you have to train daily basis absolutely but i'm sure that uh, with the help of the isu and not changing the rules for the next year oh. they're gonna be like okay in a couple of months when everything will be a little bit more chill 
with this coronavirus spreading. Oh, that's interesting about the <coughs> rules not changing. Does that mean you're keeping yeah, the programs the same for your skaters? The same elements, same step sequence, all this? Um, it, it really depends because, I mean, you know uh, yourself that uh, keeping the same program uh, two years in a row, it's like, I mean, to be honest, it never happened. Yeah. I would have never wanted to have the same program two years yeah. in a row. Also because you put so much emotion in it and you listen to the music the same day that to try to motivate it for another year. I don't know, I just feel that it's not For, it's for not anyone right. watching but, though and wondering... I think to be said... For any, sorry, for anyone w off watching and wondering, by the end of a season, you have been practicing that program for um, probably five, six hours a day for about eight, nine months straight. And hearing that same music all the time, you are definitely sick of it and by the end of the world championships you're like done give me anything else ready to move on <laughs> yes but we have a question actually is there any specific of ice exercise that your student did that has helped them adopt to the ice quicker than otherwise but in order to it's an interesting question because of course like uh, to simulate the ice um, flow experience or whatever like uh, biomechanic movement to simulate that on the floor it's quite hard yeah. you can simulate it like, let's say on 80 percent i would say as maximum as you can reach and uh, i'm pretty sure that lloyd in your videos uh, for instance like uh, three turn crossover you tried your best uh, but in order to to i don't know to master that on the floor you i think that you have to have somebody qualified enough in order to correct it because otherwise you're gonna waste a lot of time doing off ice that is not worth it and it won't be useful on the ice. That's the key, isn't it? Most uh, of all, what it's the key to have the feedback yeah. from a oh, coach correct. to say, you know, you think you're doing it this way, oh, but you're correct. actually doing it this, and what you need to do is that. And sometimes you need that someone to tell you, right? Yeah, indeed. Like, uh, right now, uh, even though I have uh, like um, two off ice coaches. I'm trying to take and use this time of the coronavirus to informate, like to to learn by myself uh, throughout um, books, throughout uh, like videos, um, whatever could be helping my skaters in this time that we don't have the ice time. And I think that the best we can do in ice dance right now is to work on uh, like, like a spinner machine, for instance, for uh, working on our vestibular system. Yeah. Um, is uh, working on our dexterity on the floor and coordination because we need we need it as ice dancer and uh, most of all like uh, lift like uh, base lift ground uh, bases like exercise yes. sizes um, as well as tweezers. I mean we, I mean we could learn also pattern dance but they are the same as last year here. So right now I'm focusing on like those elements visual lift uh, and uh, spinning spinning that are mm, I don't know sometimes in Europe not that much as developed in Russia Russia and America and Canada mm. as we don't have a, such a good and high level background of, of single skating mm. so I feel that um, sometimes our turning technique is quite LeBron so that's what I'm focused yeah. Oh, interesting. Doing the doing the lifts on the floor is a really good idea. Actually, we had somebody request this personally from us as well because yeah. it's a great way to keep in shape. And I mean, that's something you can do on the floor as well and as on the little, ice. A little secret is when we're doing lifts for shows, we only practice them on the floor yeah. and rarely do them on the ice. And yeah. we just on the floor, on the floor, on the floor, on the floor, jump on the ice do it once and then it's showtime we yeah. don't practice it much on the ice it's exactly. just you know yeah. we just simulate it yeah. on the floor exactly we have another question do you feel it's easier since the whole world is basically shut down i imagine it's harder when you cannot attend some competition but everyone else can like when you're hurt let me just say uh from my experience of having a couple operations and when you see everybody else able to do things and skate and perform and you're sat on the sidelines it is one of the most frustrating things you can experience as yeah. an athlete so it's very like it's very sad what's going on right now and it's very difficult don't get me wrong it's very different to when everyone else is continuing you you can't i mean it's horrible what's going on right now um but it's also very miserable when everyone else can do it but you can't yeah it is yeah. isn't it yeah <clears throat> So, we have a couple more questions yeah. here. 
Do you have a tip how to? You're really true. Do you have a tip how to practice the axle off ice? That is well, three ice dancers for yeah. a single skating question, <laughs> but we can <laughs> we we're gonna we'll give it a go. <laughs> Basically, yeah, I'm not gonna. Answer I'll that. I'll give it a I'll give it a stab if you want. Basically, um, you want to practice your jump rotation exercise. You want to practice your axle walkthroughs, and you want to practice your waltz jump. And basically, you need to improve your dynamic uh, ability to spring up higher and snap into that rotation position. And we actually have videos covering lots of these on the uh, YouTube channel and on our Patreon page. And I know this information from spending hours and hours and hours editing Jono's videos and the information on how to jump and what to do is ingrained in my head now. There so you thank go. you Jono for sending me the uh, videos to edit. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, some more questions coming in. Abby. Abby's, from the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Recently. So if I understood it correct, Abby, I think that um, I mean you you should understand quite easily which is your jumping uh, side because you should be more comfortable jumping on that side. It's like as easy as it sounds. So if you feel comfortable jumping more on it clockwise direction then tell your coach to practice more that otherwise if you feel more comfortable counterclockwise then I will uh, go ahead and or you can be as as polyglot as uh, a lot of people speak languages and you can jump both sides and master it both I will share a story with you right about the direction you jump and it was I did the world team trophy and the next day we went in to the rink to give like a seminar and there was a few skaters it was me my partner there was Patrick Chan Daisuke Takahashi and a few other like high level skaters and th there was basically all the kids got on the ice and they started skating and we're talking kids like 10 years old and I think Patrick he said you know warm up your, your single axle or something and the guys, they started skating and they do like double, 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 triple, 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 triple. And they were just doing triple axles everywhere. And we were just like, our jaw dropped. And there were so many of them all at this level, all doing it. And, um, you know, we spoke to Takahashi, like, is this normal? And we said, what happens if someone jumps the other way? And he just said to us, ah, oh, well, they wouldn't let them skate in the rink. They'd have to go somewhere else. So it was just that busy with that many that are that good if you didn't jump the same way as everyone else. They said, could not be yeah, lefty. Tough, get lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Um, here, how... Uh, sorry, there's a few questions coming in. I'm trying to keep up with everything. I see one from Anna. How far are you in the industry when you start skating at 18? Could you possibly go into competitions? Um, there's always competitions for everybody um you know doing different things uh for every level and every yeah, age group yeah there's there's always something to to go for um you know you you might not get to the olympics if you start at age 18 but that doesn't mean there's a lot that the sport can't offer you anyway we worked with someone on disney on ice and he started skating at age 16 and you know a lot of people wrote him off and said yeah you'll never be anything you're too old and he actually you know worked hard and actually went on to skate in disney on ice for about uh, 13 or 14 years and traveled yeah. the whole world with skating so you know it's just because you start late doesn't mean there isn't something you can do that is absolutely incredible in the sport so and don't let absolutely. anybody tell you no you know absolutely yeah yeah luke it's we never <laughs> yeah luke brotherson it's never too late to start skating so yeah just keep at it and there's always like adult competitions and you know you yeah. can always go that route and or the show route whatever you like um here you go stefano how about you feel this one tips reduce the fear of falling oh <laughs> but i mean it's understandable but our vestibular system is trained in a way that uh, learn the most uh, until it's developed enough. Mm -hmm. So that means that when you start skating late, uh, this fear of going backward and falling backward that give you this like uh, posture, like all in front with like those shoulder in front, it's not trained at all. So 
normally what I used to say of like on my skaters, like my goal is to put them on the edge of their like fear and try to push them over in order to accomplish like another feeling that should be the right one in order to skating. So what I used to say is like, why you have fear overall? Like if you fall, you're just gonna fall. So, mm -hmm. and if they are fearing like the fall, I'm just doing exercises with falling on. Like, like deliberately I know, falling. I do like rocker counter exercise. <laughs> exactly, rocker counter exercise. And then we simulate a fall on a topic and then try to fall and land without hurting yourself. Like, you know, we are skating on a surface that has to be our friend. Yes. I remember like uh, one of my like most inspiring people in skating was like Charlene Bourne. Mm -hmm. And I remember that she was telling all the skaters that before like doing something during the day, you should do a warm up that allows you to fill the ice and to make confidence. And um, remember that uh, you are a friend and if you are nice to the ice, then the, the ice is going to be nice to you. So even falling, that of course is a lot of balance and under controlling of something. It's okay. It's because you are trying to push yourself on a further level. It's totally fine. Exactly. So, fall more. Well, I mean, I can certainly say I've had my fair share of falls. I've had my fair share of falls in competition. And I've had my fair share of falls in I shows. I remember the one so, at the European Championship in Budapest. In I Budapest. I remember Barbara's face on the replay when she was, oh, and it, she looked like her heart was broken at <laughs> the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, you know, it happens. And, you know, I got off the ice from that one. She was very upset. Well, I was very upset, let's say. And she just said, Lloyd, you fell in your appearance. Try losing your medal at the Olympics because of a fall. <laughs> that famous. So, yeah. Indeed. Famous uh, there you go. Her. There you yeah. go. Uh, checking some more here. It, uh, oh, artificial ice. Okay. We've got quite a bit of experience skin on artificial ice. Wait, you have that, right? Yeah. Okay, we both skate on artificial ice. Yeah. Uh, it's an in. Same thing. You've done it as well. Okay, so not let's... like not plastic ice, but oh, like... okay. Yeah. I, d I think it mean I think they're talking about plastic ice. Okay. My, it's my guess. I've done plastic ice. I've done plastic ice. Yeah, I I did it again. It's quite like uh, you know, for it's. It's not figure skating, it's not um, gliding, but uh, you, you, you're you gonna do yeah. it. I mean, I was asked to, to join a private marriage in Marrakesh and doing like a nice show with my partner. That's so cool. In a private wedding on a plastic I mean, that's ice. An so I was like, oh my god. <laughs> that's amazing. In Morocco? That's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Believe me. My, uh, my experience. We've been there for 10 days uh, to skate like uh, two and a half days. <laughs> oh, this so is not a bad job. <laughs> it was a good yeah. deal. My, my experience on the plastic ice was um, we were doing a show and it was ice, quite, quite a small surface. Um, and then they had like a stage where it was plastic ice. And the problem was, was they didn't screw all the pieces of the plastic ice down flat. So there were lips everywhere. So you'd skate and you'd glide, but then you'd hit a corner of the next piece and you'd trip and then you'd hit the next piece. And they didn't, yeah. they did no maintenance on it. So it didn't really glide that well. And uh, I think it was only once or twice I had too much speed. I had to hop onto the plastic ice during a lift and it just, I just ground to a halt straight away and then had to put my yes, port partner you. down and shamefully walk off oh. back to the ice and carry on with the routine. <laughs> Oh so yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, but... I've never skated on it personally. Uh, me neither. Me neither. It's actually really yeah. bad. It will it's trash really your blade something terrible as well. Yes, You'll have to keep sharpening bad. them, and yeah, that's something you will have to, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, we've got music coming in. So next question. Wish you could throw a shot myself flying overboard with a gimbal. Yeah, that is a fall I did when trying to make. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a feed of background music coming in, and I don't really know why. I don't hear any background. Yeah, music it's coming. I think it's a bug on our end. This is a uh, something for live streaming, but you know. Okay. I can't really turn it off. 
Have you ever joined the Holiday on Ice show? Have I? I have. I've skated for Holiday on Ice, and I think you have an experience. Um, doing uh, actually, it's not true because uh, I had experience with the Holiday on Ice as an outsider. So I was asked to perform in an Holiday on Ice show in Berlin yeah. after the Olympic Games. So I didn't have to handle like this, like five days, five shows per day. I had just to do one show one time. Yeah, and that was it. Well, um, yeah. Sorry, I had a load of background music coming in, and I finally managed to turn <laughs> it off so I can carry on with the question. <laughs> I skated for Holiday on Ice for three years, and I did a lot of shows for them, and I had a wonderful experience with them. And that is where my story earlier on about the trousers splitting and revealing my dance belt to the world came from. Actually, a Holiday on Ice show. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Goodness. Yeah, um, and going back to what Alex said about the shot flying overboard on the gimbal, that is one I'm going to post up soon actually. I was filming someone do a tutorial and I wasn't looking where I went and I hit the headers as we call them in shows and went flying over forwards. But I protected my camera so that was fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny moment. Here, yeah. Is it possible to learn ice skating all by myself? Huh? It's a tough question. I think, I mean, everything is possible, but I don't know. Maybe you have to watch at least some videos of Lloyd <laughs> explaining how to do a tree test. Yeah, I, I mean, of course you can learn on your own. You don't necessarily need a coach, but having a little bit of guidance and help um, certainly helps and because uh, ice skating is a, a bit of a interesting art and um, depends when you start but uh, but yeah I don't know I, I it's that's the time I think I think you, there's a lot you can learn so for my first my personal experience first off everything you see on this live stream I taught myself um, online over the past two days and put everything together um, everything you see on Ice Coach Online, I taught myself by watching YouTube videos on making films and editing and things like this. So there's a lot you can learn like this. In the past, I've learned like different styles of dance by watching online videos. So there is a lot you can learn, but there there is also a thing where a coach comes into play that's very important, and that is getting feedback on what you're doing because sometimes you can watch something and then you can think you're doing it um, and in reality you're not actually doing exactly what you think you're doing and that's when a coach comes exactly. in and they're like okay actually you know you think you're doing that and you understand you should be doing that but actually you're doing this so you need to make sure and you know they can they can fix it um, which is something that's very hard to do with YouTube videos because they tend to be like a one-way thing and that's why we offer like zoom classes as well yeah. and we have patreon where you know people who are members can you know they send videos and we tell them what they're doing wrong so we, we try and go around that that way of course it's much easier when you're live face to face with the student on the ice and you can just like this tell them everything they need to be doing so that is um that's the best I can cover that one, if yeah. I'm completely honest. There's a lot you can do. It's like do. a second pair of eyes yeah. to, to yeah. help. Yeah. yeah, so that is a good one. Uh, there was a, a question I saw. Can you please say a few words about heel height on the influence of skating? Yeah. Mm. I I'll, yeah. I want to share a story with you that I don't know if many people know. Stefano probably knows and Stasia probably knows. But Russian skaters actually build their heel up to be higher because when they bend their knees, it makes the judges think they have a deeper knee bend than they actually do. Mm. So they try and create this illusion by putting their feet up like this. So, I mean, what's your thought on it, guys? I mean, Gunther I mean, said here that he also had half an inch heel lift on his um, first two pairs of skates. And mm. yeah, I mean, it- A it, more aggressive skater. Yeah. Ah, Alex, you weren't I, that skater when we met you. <laughs> Anyway. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but I I don't know. Um, Stefano, what do you think? I mean, I never had I never had my heel lifted any more than what I but I mean I always had a dance so, boot. So I did have. Yeah. I did have for like more or like um, my um, three quarter of my uh, skating career because my coach 
at the time in Roma was he believed that um, lifting the heel like a centimeter more it gives you like more aerodynamic mm-hmm. it gives you like a more possibility to bend but of course I have some like side um, effect that for instance like you have to be very careful about which muscle you are using in order to bend backward uh, when you skate uh, yeah. because you're gonna be very very soundy like uh, you're gonna be very noisy mm-hmm. when you skate uh, mm-hmm. it could be possible so you make sure that uh, your like topic are like I don't know or you cut it or you don't use it at all um, I mean, we are skating already, like the, the skate itself is on a hill. So it's already like with an angle on the side. If you increase the angle of half a centimeter, it's just a question or one centimeter of adaptation mm-hmm. and, and muscle memory or so whatever works yeah. for you. I would not skate with flat, like no heel and no topic. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think, it's not rewarding. Uh, okay, yeah. interesting to hear. Um, in similar, and this is something I noticed from Italian skaters, and you might know a little bit more about this, Stefano. But I remember Marco. Well, not Marco. Roberto's teams. Yeah, I remember they used to between the blade and the boot, they used to add an extra piece of material so the blade would sit lower from the boot. And then they could lean over further on yeah. the edges before the boot touched. And if the boot went, basically for people who who don't know this, um, when you lean over on the ice onto an edge one way or another, as soon as your boot touches, you will fall instantly and there's nothing you can do about it. And eventually over time, sometimes skates are a bit wide and they wear down the more you skate. Um, but the Italians, their workaround was to add this piece of material, making their blade sit down here so they could lean further before mm-hmm. they wiped out. Uh, did you have <laughs> blades like this when you skated for Italy? Yes. No, I didn't have that, but uh, I actually uh, shaped my side of the boot already before even use it. Because, you know, it's like a shoes. Yeah. If you use it a lot in your sole, it's going to get like worse. But if you shape it already, when you lean, it's gonna, it's not gonna touch, but you still have like another like two, three degrees and go before before you yeah. fall. So I yeah. did that. It sounds it, it sounds like a, a little bit. I remember, I remember sanding my skates down as well because I thought every t- every every bit I sand down with my hand is one less fall. So I, <laughs> I did exactly the same thing. So yeah, that was a that was a good question. Thank you for asking that. That was a good question. Um, um, we have from see. Abby, I think, aside from practicing spinning on land, is there anything else to do to get used to Disney dizziness? i maybe um, let you answer this because I grab Anastasia's ankle and swing her around very fast for a living, so uh, <laughs> and she might say it's very dizzy, <laughs> gets very dizzy from it, so... I, <laughs> I'll be completely ob- honest with you, Abby, and, and for anyone that's wondering, you know, that question, it, Sometimes you don't get over the dizziness. <laughs> um, no, I mean, for for a spin, um, I don't get dizzy anymore too much, but for maybe a very fast rotational lift that I might do with Lloyd or like a bounce spin, I'll feel pretty dizzy afterwards. But if you just find that, you know, focal point after to just focus on and maybe it's the adrenaline of like being in a show or a competition or something where I feel like, oh my gosh, I have to gather my surroundings and just like, you know, focus. Maybe that helps. But I I think repetition is a big yeah. factor of helping with dizziness in general. The more you do it, the more it's going to become like second nature. So that's why if I'll go to do a spin by myself, I, I don't feel dizzy normally coming out of it and I mean I had a, quite a bit of ballet training too so I don't know if maybe just like doing spins and pirouettes on the floor helped as well but yeah I would say repetition and just finding a point to focus on after yeah I think good advice I mean I, I don't get as dizzy as much because nowadays I'm I don't really jump or spin much anymore mm. and I'm the one in the center uh, imagine here and Anastasia is out there and I'm spinning her so she gets very dizzy and I, I don't get so dizzy myself so uh, then that was some pretty good advice and uh, before I go into the next one for everyone watching 
smash up the likes let us know you're enjoying the content and we'll keep producing it basically now going on to the next one um i've been doing well in my inline skates on really smooth surfaces i saw your video you skate beautiful thank you robin thank you, um robin. this is an interesting one actually because we've been using our inline skates and it kind of replicates skating a bit but mm -hmm. as soon as i try and let's let's word it like this and i think stefano and stage will understand what i mean every time i try and yeah. grip and go and really skate the wheel just goes instantly and i kind of feel like i can only walk I mean, and pretend yeah. a little bit you know and i know your skaters have them I right mean... stefano I, I I ordered them. I didn't. They didn't arrive yet. But uh, when I saw your video, I had to like you know empathize <laughs> with you, and I'm pretty sure it is like this because um, yeah. on the ice we have a blade, and it doesn't matter how sharp it is that. But if you have a good ankle action and knee action, you can grip yes. quite a lot, and you can lean, and uh, the tangent on the circle is gonna be definitely higher than what you can get in a chi with roller skates. Especially because uh, we are not like Formula One that our grip on the tires are produced in order to achieve the best grip ever on a curve. <laughs> Those tires that are made for rollerblading are, I mean, made to rollerblade, not to be like Formula yeah. One rollerblading. And the surface you are skating on, it's like a parking lot. Like, it was a bad surface guess, we were actually. skating on, granted. So, <laughs> so of course you're gonna sleep out. Uh, of course you're gonna sleep yeah. out. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, perhaps quads would be better then because they're more like a Formula One car than the rollerblades. But yeah. I've been speaking to a lot of people in the comments and they told me that one, my equipment wasn't really very good quality. Two, the, uh, the wheels were just not outdoor wheels. So they're they just not. got destroyed yeah. immediately. We have um, to find like yeah. really smooth, yeah. kind of like almost basketball or tennis. They court. said we're skating on basically yeah. indoor equipment, although it's marketed as outdoor equipment. So I think I'm, I'm interested to try the proper equipment and it, it give me a better idea, you know, for what you can do on rollers because I wouldn't like to sum it up with just that if mm -hmm. I'm completely honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A uh, quick question here. Can you do a front or backflip on the ice? I can't. Uh, Stasia can't. I assume Stefano can't. <laughs> Jono can, who does videos well, because yeah, he's Jono, a free scale, a Jono freestyle a skater. Beautiful yeah. Beautiful backflip. And he he doesn't have a lot of fear, so he can. Stasia can do a backflip if I hold her hips and throw her over my head, and then she doesn't mind doing one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I remember actually. Lloyd, what do you think about this question? Where? Like, oh. When it comes to a skate spinner, it seems I observe people more flat floated or apply more pressure to the middle back of the foot. On ice, your pivot point is on the bottom pick and ball of the sh out of the foot. Should we try to do the same on the spinner? I want practice. I mean, I don't want to practice mm. wrong. So I don't know about you, but I have an opinion on the spinner that the spinner, the idea of the spinner is to practice the spinning rotation yes. correctly. So as much as you have a, a, a technique of rotating good, yeah. then this is like to train your vestibular system of rotating. So then when you got on, on the ice, you're gonna adapt. Yeah. It. yeah. It's gonna transfer in knowledge from one to the other. It's, I mean, it's very hard to practice wrong a spinner if you can spin like for one minute without stopping, for instance. And you have a good yeah. balance. I mean, spinning is also between like, uh, like uh, you know, the knowledge of your foot, how much front and back, and how much inside and outside that you have to carry on. I thought I let me just say, from my experience, I've got a spinner and I used it for only five minutes because I'm gonna make a YouTube video and I want to capture my first try on it to show. Like, and I can spin and twizzle pretty easily on the ice, but I want to capture quite how different it is. And my first five minutes, I was like, wow, this isn't this isn't the same at all. And you have to practice a lot yeah. to kind of get mm -hmm. get used to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Stasia got on better with it in her five minutes um, because she did a lot of ballet, a lot of pirouettes, and that kind of translated very well to the spinner because she just got on it and pirouetted quite easily. Yeah, um, I still felt, you know, the difference though of like, you know, where your foot kind of yeah. is on the ice and versus yeah. on the spinner. I, they, Ever so slightly. Yeah, yeah they 
they, they're good, obviously. There's, a, there's that video of that kid who's whipping out spins like you won't believe on yeah. it, you know? And he's just, nothing stopping him doing every position under the sun. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I would be more on the lines of you, Stefano, in saying what they're good for is exactly what you said, to yeah. be honest. Mm -hmm. And another use I did find of them is if you're practicing a turn on the ice, like a bracket or some, uh, sorry, if you're practicing a turn off the ice, like a bracket or something like this, the fact that it has kind of a rocker on it allows you to practice having the weight in the heel and then rolling it to the ball of the foot turn and keep it on the ball of the foot. You can kind of use it to some effect practicing one foot turns like that. So that was some, that rocking action I felt was quite good that if you're just in your sock, <clears throat> I mean, you, you can, but it's not quite the same. Yes, indeed, indeed. I mean, um, in order to practice turns, I prefer to use the rotating machine, not the electrical one because you can activate exactly the part of the foot that you should activate on the eyes. But referring to the of Lotti, like practicing Mohawk off eyes, I think it's possible. But as it said, you have also on the floor to feel the, the muscle that you activate on the eyes exactly, exactly the, that one. Because otherwise uh, you practice something else that you can practice like a shuttle yeah. or whatever. So I think everything is possible if you are aware of, of which muscle you have to activate in which yeah. time. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that is our advice on spinners. Now I've just seen another uh, comment quite high up that says, is there a technique to not tire weak knees too much? I heard it's only good to skate uh, like, like a, a wave. wave without locking them. Now I agree with that wave thing. Um, I had different coaches throughout my career and one coach, one style is the French style and that's the style I like skating with and it's where you have a lot of rise and fall and I like skating like this and there's swings and roundabouts to it but I tried a Russian style with Russian coaches for a while and when you sit in the knees constantly I found that I skated slower, my knees just hurt and after one minute or two minutes of my free program my legs were just dead. And so I like this more kind of soft style that you see like Papadakis Caesar on skate with mm -hmm. personally. That would be my go-to. Um, what are your thoughts on this style of skating, Stefano? And are there, is there a technique to not tire or weak knees too much? Of course, I love the technique of sitting 90 degrees and then just stay there very static. <laughs> it's uh, how I like the most. Is that your favorite? It's brutal. No, but, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, of course. It's like a 90, I don't know, 40. No, but um, I like to see it as a flow. I mean, it has to be done like that. The problem is that kids understand it late because they are not aware of exactly what they should do and how smooth it should be. And um, I encourage them also to walk in normal life like that in order to feel that the resistance when they walk into the into the I don't know whatever like cement or uh, on the walk side, it's like always up and down has mm. to be smooth, and to reproduce that on the ice with the confidence and uh, like coordination of the arm and right portion of the body, that is the yeah. hard thing, I mm. think. Uh, but for sure, if your biomechanic body works like. I mean, you you know the train that you are like uh, in front of each other. Yeah, the old one school one, down up and down. One yeah. up. <laughs> exactly. If you move up this movement and you go infinity with this movement, you are not going to spend a lot of energy skating. So your goal is to have less traction on the ice and to use uh, your muscle and your blades as optimal as you can in order to have less traction, to be less tired, to perform longer mm -hmm. and better. It's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, well worded. Yeah. No, I like that. Um, quick question, what's the difference between a toe loop and a Lutz? Oh. The, there's many differences. You pick a different toe in the ice and you're on different... Actually, you're, you're both on outside edges, but you're going the, the opposite way, basically. Yeah. If you're picking the left foot with the toe, you're on a right outside edge going into it. And mm -hmm. if, you're doing a, if you jump this, that way, uh, your Lutz will be on the other foot on an outside edge and picking the right toe, but then still jump in the same way. Uh, we have tutorials on our channel that explained in a lot of detail these jumps. Mm -hmm. So uh, check them out. They will help you a lot, I think. 
Um, looking through the more, have you got a question there, Stefano? By the way, yes. Lloyd, uh, we have uh, like, um, uh, you remember in Aribert? Yes. Is she in the chat? Yes, she just texted me that. Uh, ah. Yes, uh, she just texted me and she says hello. That we're doing awesome and we should drink a little bit less. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday, Karim. So it's, it's, the, it's the evening. And it's for not us. wine, but it's. Uh, Hennessy. Hennessy, very classy. Well, we've got classy. red wine. And I just, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's been a, a lot of work putting this stream together. So we're yeah. relaxing, enjoying, and we're trying to make it as a very chilled out, casual experience, yeah. you know? I feel casual that. There you go. is the key word. <laughs> I mean, it has been a crazy time. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> um, uh, on ice, your pivot point is on the bottom pick and ball of the foot. Should we try to do the same on the spinner? I don't want to practice it wrong. I think that was the question we were talking about the spinner already. Sorry, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah. I've got mine stuck in the complete wrong place. I'm way back. Would you say getting off ice skates would help your footwork, like practicing mohawks? Yeah, you can practice those. I, for the sake of mohawks, I don't, I don't think you have to get off ice skates in particular. I think there's a lot of brands and for a mohawk, even your basic roller skate will help you glide one way, open a foot and step to backwards. I don't I don't think you need anything particularly expensive for that. Mm -hmm. The only thing you would need for three turns is to make sure you have a rocker on it. And if you've got a rocker, um, you know, you can do that. So, oh, we've got a big a big window and a generous donation. Thanks so much. First of all, from Thank May H. You, May. First of all, I love your videos, guys. I'm a beginner and I'm struggling with weight transfer from one foot to another. Any exercise yeah. you would recommend? <laughs> but with weight transfer, oh. let me just say, um, you should always have... That's all about skating. Sorry? Lloyd. That's all about skating. It is, it is the, the it key is. to everything on the ice. And I will sum up mine like this. Yeah. Your, your feet should always be underneath you, no matter what you're doing. The second your feet are not underneath you, you are asking to fall. So it is really important that you have your feet underneath you. Yes. And if you're trying to go from one foot to the other, if you have a foot or two feet in between your feet, you're going to be falling from one foot to the other. So if you do forward skating, you skate onto one foot, you bring the feet together, you bend the and your feet are message. still together, and then you push and transfer to the new foot. Yes. And a common thing, and to be honest, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus now, but I was watching the European Championships um, this most recent year, and some couples, even in the ice dance event, would would do like step chasse step, and they would do step chasse, and they would keep their back leg locked out and fall onto their next leg. And I was thinking, how on earth yeah. can you give such a couple like seven in components? Because it's such a basic basic technique to a do chasse high, by the way. yeah seven out of ten I it's agree. such a basic technique to do chasse I rebend agree. glide onto the next foot so you know we're talking with weight transfer you have any thoughts on that as well stefano stasia anyone wait um i mean weight transfer is something that you really have i think that first of all you have to conceptualize it like you have to understand what is weight transfer it's like when you move in one direction then you bend and your weight is transferred like diagonally like in front of you and then has to re-bend and in that moment in which you weight transfer like it's how you're walking you never walk like uh, first your feet and then you transfer your weight on like you do all simultaneously mm -hmm. yeah uh, in order to do that and to bend your knees on the eyes especially backward uh, it's a lot of like um, pain in the ass exercises uh, and uh, you have not to be afraid of falling or like uh, catching your topic uh, because uh, if you don't transfer your weight correctly then you don't glide correctly and then you waste a lot of energy and you're gonna be tired after two minutes of your run exactly. but this is um gone yeah. oh no just agreeing with step oh okay yeah. um you know this transfer of weight is is with absolutely everything and if you step in to do like let's say we talk about jumps okay i know we're at the ice dancers but let's and I, i'm going to use the john knowledge right now if you step into a jump and you don't have your weight over your foot perhaps you step and your foot is there but your body weight is back here the second you jump you're off axis so as you keep turning you're yeah. more off axis and then 
sometimes you see people in competition land them after doing this and we all just shrug our shoulders and say I have no idea how they land it and a great example of yeah. this that comes to mind is Plushenko in the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver he skated his long program and yeah. every jump in the air was completely like this and then he landed every one of them and everyone was every time was like I had no idea how he has landed these jumps so it just shows it you know if your weight is not over your feet everything becomes incredibly difficult mm -hmm. yeah as far as exercises that we recommend for that we'll try to come up with a couple maybe for some of yeah but some you, future youtube videos i'd say if you're yeah we will come up with some exercises yeah. off the top of my head a very basic exercise would be bending on one leg and you step wide and transfer your weight completely to the other leg oh, and just yeah. practice transferring the weight across and i released yeah. a video recently a diy slide board video where you oh. use some socks and some housing you know objects on a, a slippery floor and you slide back and forth between the two that teaches you weight transfer between your feet very well because if yeah. you don't transfer it you can't get the power to slide back to the other side so great exercise actually i have it here at home because i'm doing workout with my skaters like, like at home and i have that slide board Did you? Nice. and then it's incredible like how um, how much i have to tell them like how to do proper exercise because they just don't feel it they don't yeah. know it it's not common they are afraid like imagine that you have to project your weight in front of you while you are stepping on something that is on two blades like on one blade on edges so and even on the floor you are afraid to step on something and then put the like the weight on it something like we have to learn like muscle memory mm -hmm. some great uh, great tips there yeah. i'm looking through some others um uh see. flying camel off ice yes of course it's possible you can do exercise for your lower back uh, or like uh, you can grab something and then you can just like swing from one side to the other yeah. one and just like swinging your legs on perhaps uh, like if you have a very large side. kitchen it would work uh, <laughs> if you have a small apartment it might be a little difficult but yeah. it's the, in the <laughs> same way that you would practice holding onto the barrier in the ice rink and this this motion right to practice the kick up and land yeah I think that's the one, right? Exactly. Um, Do you can guys you think of any ice skater specific things that is normal for insiders, but something outsiders can't even think of? Um, in response to this, Kat, which, um, if you can leave us a message and let us know um, in, in regards to what exactly, is this like for an off ice exercise or an on ice exercise? If you mm -hmm. drop us a comment below, Mm -hmm. We will we'll have a think about that. Yeah. Um, how okay. easily would you say off ice jumps transfer directly onto the ice, such as axle doubles, without having landed either on the ice before, but consistent with singles? Um, if you can't do them at all off the ice, I think you're going to struggle to do them on the ice. Mm -hmm. And learning the motion and the techniques on the ice, off the ice, sorry, are certainly going to help transfer that on the ice. In the same way that if you if you understand how to do a three turn and you walk through the movements on the floor, you have a better shot at doing it on the ice. But as soon as you get on the ice, you might find that your coordination has gone completely out of the window straight away, which is normal because there's a lot of other things going on and, it, and it's kind of scrambling your mind a little bit like that. So you can, ex if you can do it on the floor, don't expect to just do it on the ice, but having a good understanding and muscle memory of what you should be doing on the floor will certainly help you on the ice. Any thoughts, anyone? Yeah. I mean, Lloyd, like, nowadays, if you have a spinner machine, like a mechanical one, and there is somebody that uh, has a harness yes. on you and then teach you at least what is your axis and you just practice it, yeah, of course you're going to be better on the, uh, on the eye. Yeah. In answer to uh, Robin about the live chats, yes, we're going to keep doing live chats and we're going to bring in... Especially in the night between like 3 and 5 p.m. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's 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 uh, these live chats now I've set them up they're quite they're okay to do and we're gonna bring I'm sure in the future Stefano will come back for more of them and we'll bring other guest coaches and bring you know people in and do lots of live chats because you know if it's something people are enjoying and if you are enjoying them make sure you give us a like you know and subscribe to the channel if you haven't because yeah, this, yeah. all these things help us and we appreciate it 
Um, so we will keep doing them if everyone wants to keep seeing them. Um, let's see, I have a D Overture skates. Should I buy the same for off ice? Um, it depends on the budget, really. If you've yeah. got the budget for it, I would keep things the same. Yeah. Um, you can use the same ones with off ice picks and frames, mm -hmm. but it's a bit of a pain to keep switching them over. It is. But, if you have a pair of old boots, that would be ideal because yeah. that's what Lloyd and I did. We just used a pair yeah. of our old. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Because I mean, I agree. not that it, I mean, you you definitely can buy a new pair if you want to. But yeah, if you have an old pair hanging around, I would use that personally. I will just say one thing though about the off ice, like and rollers and that. The one thing that I feel is one hundred percent different to on the ice is spins. And I haven't practiced many spins in them, but I would be curious to know how my spins have changed when I go back on the ice if I did a lot. So for people, I would maybe, if it's so different to spin on the floor, maybe it's worth just, you know, not bothering. <laughs> did you, Lloyd, did you have uh, like this kind of fear? I don't know, like, you know, imagine you are like one month uh, before the European Championship and then you cannot practice and then and somebody tells you like, oh, you can roller skate, but then you will do some elements, but some others you will not do it because you have the fear that otherwise they would change when you go back on the ice. Is this the feeling that you have with Pizza um, on ice? I mean, my biggest fear, and I think Stasia shared the same fear, um, bear in mind we're skating in a terrible, uh, bumpy McDonald's car park, um, <laughs> was if we fall, we will get a scar from the rough concrete yeah. and I didn't want a scar. Exactly. But We really need yeah. to invest in some elbow oh, pads. And you don't even ah! have your wheels yet. What's that for? Oh my gosh. The worst I've done was to uh, fall on my butt. That's what a brawler. <laughs> well, yeah, um, you know, because I'm not competing anymore, I have less of a fear of losing the, the technique, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but it was just something that yeah. crossed my mind doing those spins or like, it might, it, the rocket is just so different um, that I, I worried that it might change things. Okay. And then it, it doesn't matter because I've absolutely destroyed mine in about three hours. So I can't, I have the wheels have worn right down. I did a few power slides, which are basically like hockey stops and it just finished them off. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I've done, I need better equipment, yeah. you know. Stefano, we have an Olympic question. Mm. And I don't know if your experience oh, yes. was the same oh, as yeah. mine, but I found it to be one of the least stressful competitions of my life. And the reason was, was I knew that I couldn't score higher than 10th. And basically, if you're like, if you can get a medal, it's the most stressful event of your life. Mm. And if you can't get a medal, guess, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not stressful at all. But yeah. you want to skate well, and there's the stress to perform well so that you yourself, you feel good about yourself. But, yeah. you know, for the person who is in, you know, a potential to get a medal, if they come first, second or third, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of sponsorship, there's a lot to gain from yeah. it. And for anybody who can't come first, second or third, you basically... You're just performing for yourself as an athlete, your own pride, your friends and family, and not a lot on the line. I for you, agree. Really. Right. I agree, and that's how the spirit I took this competition because um, I will never forget the moment. I mean, Olympics. Uh, yeah, we can talk about it. We like Lloyd and I. We share a story that we tattoo. Like we never wanted a tattoo in our life, and we got a tattoo exactly the same thing, uh. the same spot with Olympic ring. We did them so, both the same in Cardiff, yeah. Them, like, the Olympic so Games, you know, Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. The Olympic Games uh, is something that you you wanted to achieve as an athlete, uh, like, since you were born. And once you arrive there, and as Lloyd said, you are not competing for the first three, so it's just up to you. I remember stepping on the ice uh, and thinking about all the journey, like, I don't know, those moments in which you and your partner skate around and they you wait until they call your name. It's like how much, maybe one minute that you have your thoughts like somewhere else. And I was thinking about my family watching, my friends, uh, all the sacrifice that uh, it happened to go there. And I was just happy. I was just like, okay, let's do this. Let's perform, let's have fun. Let's do, deliver a nice program. So um, I remember that um, we had a nice time because that's the spirit I took the Olympic games. It's just like a competition that, um, 
you want to perform good to yourself, uh, to the people that they're watching, to deliver a message and then have fun with the people that you love the most. And I think we, had, we, we, we did that, Lloyd. In, in we Lloyd. certainly <laughs> did. As, and I will play a game for the people that didn't see it before. This is <laughs> the first thing that happened when we had finished the free dance at the Olympics. We went to, I went to see Stefano. He said, hey Lloyd, come to the German house. I have something to show you. <laughs> and I got to the German house and this is what you. happened. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. we had this, you know. <laughs> so this is, this is the first thing that we did after the free dance. Aww. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Many of the Olympic athletes would be celebrating. You guys have every reason to be really proud for what you accomplished. Well, certainly every competition leading up to that event was the most stressful thing of my career. Yeah. Yes. But then when you were there... I agree. You know. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Can you do basic single jumps in a Graf 500? Mm. I currently have wrist sport electrolytes. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know what a Graf 500 boot is like. Um, Graphs, um... But I will share this. I saw a guy recently do a backflip in higher skates. Not recommended to try, but <laughs> yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. Higher skates are rental skates. Not bad. Yeah. Rental skates. Rental yeah. skates. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but yeah. He was crazy. So. Anything is possible. <laughs> no, graphs are graphs is a, a pretty good boot, and um, I would I would think yeah, you're more than capable to do single jumps in those, and doubles and triples. Yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, no overall. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, like, just. Old, uh, like, uh, certainly. Mm. Yeah. I'm answering this question here. Before I could imagine, e.g., the coldest thing about skating is the wind. Can you think of issues fellow skaters understand? No overall, like, before I started skating, I couldn't imagine that, for example, the coldest thing. Okay, before you started skating, uh, oh, people, <laughs> what they wouldn't understand. Um, that's a really tough question to answer. Um, does anyone else have any ideas? I, I no. will say this. Normally before people start skating, they think the thing that's guaranteed going to happen if they fall is someone's going to skate over their hands on the ice and cut all their fingers off. And to be honest, I've never seen that happen in my life. Some people might have, but generally those higher skates are so blunt that if someone tries to skate over it, they're going to just trip over your hand and hurt themselves and then you'll have a bit of a bruise on your finger and you'll probably be a bit annoyed that they did skate <laughs> yeah. over your hand and give you a bruise but that's about it i've never you know they're not they're not like chef's knives and just straight through that is not a thing so that would be the only thing i could think of it's funny <laughs> that you say that story lord and anastasia how long have you been a team how long have you been a team i've been training in the u.s well we ah. well you can share your story about training in the U.S. because you're American. Yeah, I was um, I was a national and international ice dancer for the U.S. So um, I'm I'm American. My my parents are Russian, but I uh, was born and raised in the U.S. and um, so I I skated for the states. And uh, Lloyd and I actually met in a show uh, that we did in the U.K. for. Uh, God, Russian, ice Russian, stars, ice stars, Russian ice yeah. stars featuring the Russian Lloyd Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we met there about two years ago, and um, Lloyd kind of asked me, Do you want to skate together? And I said, Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> two years of shows together yeah. Russian ice stars, Disney on Ice, amongst others. And we haven't, re we haven't actually skated in the US training um, together. Mm. We've done a lot of shows there. Yeah. Anastasia was from the school of uh, Pasquale Camer Camer Camerlengo Ooh, I can't and get my words out. And <laughs> Angelica Krilova. And Angelica Krilova. Yeah. And I was with, yeah. amongst other coaches, I was here with Barbara Fusapoli in Italy with Stefano. And mm. that's where we trained. Yes. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Let's see, someone's telling us that basketball courts are smooth. Try out your tennis courts uh, in line skating on your videos this time. Um, we haven't tried them out only because we're on lockdown and we can't go venturing out too far. Yeah. So that is the only reason why 
we <laughs> stick that, to the McDonald's car park. Exactly, you know? yeah. I, I'd like to personally try like a tennis court or a basketball court. Um, so hopefully, after, you know, once lockdown is over, we can find one that's nearby. Yes. And give it a go. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, are there any questions that we have going? Start to get tips of fun. Another fall one. We, we yeah, covered another, that quite a lot. Another fear of falling one. It's a common one. Yeah. So I understand it. Um, yeah, so Stasia, you can just switch country. Well, actually, she was the one that didn't switch country. Um, this is an interesting one because yeah. I competed for France and I'm British, and Stefano competed for um, Germany. Germany, but he's Italian. Italian. Yeah, and, and I'm. Well, basically, <laughs> there is a, like an ISU rule which, uh, in order to represent a country, to any competition you have to be resident in that yes. country and you have to <laughs> wait one year and one day before representing that country be, uh, in order to yes. compete the only exception is the olympic games that you have to have the situation yes, exactly. wait there's so, one other the winter uh, university you can games. represent multiple countries in multiple season but you have all the time uh, have to have a waiting period of one year and one day so it's possible, but you have to wait. But there's um, it's also the Winter Universiad that you have to be the red, the the full citizen to do. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, because that's a, it goes into yes the Olympic yeah. Committee. Yeah, yes. Indeed. So you can switch, and you know it's not unheard of to have someone uh, skate, you know, for multiple countries in their career. And it isn't just in ice skating. I remember, and I wish I had prepared a cutaway for this, but at the Olympics, Stefano snuck me into the speed skating event. And we watched this uh, Russian skater win mm. an Olympic gold medal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember yeah. the crowd was going yeah. wild yeah, for this Russian free. skater. His what name was, was Victor, really? Victor Arn. Okay, and basically, I think it was in the last Olympics, he... He like kind of won, I don't know, four medals for South Korea or something. And then I don't, I don't know the full story, but there must have been some behind the scenes of thing you don't know about. And he missed like the next Olympics. And then at the following Olympics, he was back for Russia and he mm. scooped up about four gold medals for them. And uh, we were there as the crowd went wild for him, but he wasn't Russian in the slightest. He was, well, <laughs> South Korean. Yeah. Yes. So. It's those like a back a back story in which maybe like um, the federation of his country didn't do something really good to him and he decided you know what I'm gonna leave yeah <laughs> yeah and he was like bye yeah no a lot of skaters switch switch countries and um, it's not uncommon he says and and is it technically possible to skate e.g. pair skate and pair dance um. Is this related to the country switch? Because, for example, there's, as Stefano said, there's like a one year wait. If, if for example, Anastasia was American and I was British and, or French, whatever, and I wanted to skate for uh, America, there is like a one year hold yeah. before I can do it in the eyes of the ISU. Mm -hmm. um, and there, But if we were both British and we wanted to both skate for America, it becomes something like two years. There's a slight, slight difference. There's a longer hold period. But all of that is pending on getting the release from the skating federation that you used to skate for and that is the key because yes. the skating federation who has funded your career up until this point or not funded Indeed. your career depends on what federation we're talking about mm. if they decide they will not sign a piece of paper allowing you to compete for that country you cannot do it so they will just put your career on complete hold and that's when money yeah, starts coming into of. play yeah kind of. you know Yes, kind of. But anyway, generally, like pair, figure, like uh, ice dance and pair skating, is way too different. Like I would not say like that if you're a good pair skater, you can go, a, you can be a good ice dancer. There are few pair skaters that can skate good like ice dancer, but it's totally different. So I would yeah. not even mm -hmm. like compare this to yeah. this thing. Yeah, uh, I think normally if someone is kind of a bit of good at both they're not really as good in one or the other right so yeah. that's something they're very different disciplines despite i mean 
obviously they're both like you skate with a partner in both but yeah the styles the technique everything about it really is is quite different isn't it oh yes i mean the chinese couple like pair skaters uh chinese pair skaters they have a skinny skills like ice dancers. Mm. Is that the the like uh, cool. I forget their names, they're quite short, right? That they were like world champions. Ah uh, yes, they are yes, exactly. I also forgot the names because it's yeah. pair skating. Like I'm interested more <laughs> in the ice dance. But they have a good like really good uh, smooth yeah. reaction technique. Like they could be but of course it's different like the interaction between the two in the program it's more focused on the jump on the throw it's like more acrobatic yes. i would say yeah that is absolutely true yeah very um well i think we've uh, we've been on for longer than we anticipated we've yeah. been on for an hour and 15 minutes again yeah. uh, for a final time guys if you've enjoyed this live chat experience with stefano give us a few likes you know and uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel subscribe to it um, and if you want to follow us on Instagram, there are our hashtags, so give us all a follow. And um, yeah, make sure you leave us a comment, let us know what you thought of the video. I mean, Lloyd, if I may, like you are doing like a, such a great job. Nowadays, people need to like gather together, stay home and listen to some good quality explanation of how our discipline works. So guys, if you want to know better about it uh, like follow him because it's gonna be like a good coach for you cheers stefano <laughs> much appreciated yeah sweet and hand <laughs> um that was it, the couple <laughs> <laughs> well thanks so much for tuning in everyone again Thank leave a guys. comment let us know if you enjoyed this live stream chat if you want to make it a regular series on ice coach online's youtube channel let us know as well we can bring it's stefano so back and more. other guests and uh have a lot of fun, you know, this is really casual chance to get to chat to, you know, coaches and different people who are at a level that I suppose normally a lot of people wouldn't get to chat to, so. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot fun. of fun and we really, really enjoyed exactly. it. Thanks, yes. Stefano. Thank you, Stefano. Thank and you, guys. Thank, thank you, you, Lloyd. Thank you, thank you everyone, for tuning in. I miss you, guys. I cannot wait. To oh, can't yes. wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ciao. We're out. Cheers.